Good day to all of you again. Welcome back to the world of physics. And this afternoon, we are going to do something on light. Especially, we are going to touch on just concave mirrors. This is a very interesting topic, very simple, but you must have your basics firm, on firm foundation. Interesting picture there, I will explain a little more later. Now this is just to tease you. At the end of my lesson here, I'm sure you will see the light. Things will be clearer to you and you will understand this particular concept of concave mirrors. And once again, as you do this, you must keep on using questions from past years uh, to understand the concepts and to do it again and again. Alright, now let us take a look at Array drawing for concave mirrors. I'm going to go step by step and you will understand what I mean. Now firstly, let us look when we draw a ray drawing, it, we need to draw first the principal axis. And after that, we can draw the concave mirror. And this line, the vertical line, is just a representative line. We can use that to represent the concave mirror for construction purposes. And P is for pole. P-O-L-E. The pole of the mirror, the center point there. And F is the focal point of the mirror. C is the center of curvature. Now, all these are very important points. You must understand it well so that you can draw. Most importantly here so far, you must understand that F is the midpoint of CP. I repeat, F is the midpoint of CP. In other words, PF is equal to FC. Take for example, if the focal length FP of the mirror is 20 centimeters, then CP would be 40 centimeters. So keep that in mind. That is a very, uh, very important concept. Now we have an object. I'm going to just uh, help you to get the idea of how to construct these ray diagrams. So once you know how to draw it, for other uh, situations, you will be able to draw it. Let's say I would choose an object and put it between C and F here. So what is the first ray that I would draw? It would be parallel to the principal axis and then it will be reflected through the focal point. So this would be actually number 1. This is ray number 1. The next ray that we are going to draw would be from the top of the object and it cuts through the focal point F after which it is reflected parallel to the principal axis. This ray now is called ray number 2. And finally, look at this point. This point is the interception, intersection, sorry, this is the intersection between the two rays that I have just drawn. And this orange line would be called the image. So I label it as the image. Now when you get a diagram like this for a concave mirror, for any mirror or for a concave mirror for the matter, when we have an image on the same side of the mirror as the object, this is a real image. This is a real image because this is a mirror and it is on the same side of the mirror as the object. Okay. So what are the characteristics of the image? The first one would be, it is a real image. Normally, we state three. Secondly, it is inverted. And thirdly, it is an enlarged image. Now, in the examination, 
if you are asked, state one characteristic of the image, then you state any one of the three. But if you state more than one, and if one of it is wrong, then you might lose your marks. So it's very dangerous. Just answer the question. If you were to ask me, what is your name, sir? I would answer, Pang Sinan. I get one mark. I don't have to tell you my, my parents' name, my wife's name, my children's names. Not necessary. Answer straight to the point. So you can answer any one of the three characteristics if you are asked to name just one. Alright? The photograph. Say, Uncle Pang, why are you putting the photograph there? What is the point? My point is this. As you look at the photograph and the ray drawing, it makes a lot of sense. Look at the candle here where I'm pointing to. This is the object. The object. The object is between the image and the mirror. The mirror is here on the right. This is the mirror. This is a concave mirror. And the image that has been formed is on the left-hand side of the candle. On the left-hand side of the object. Enlarged image. Enlarged image. My advice to you boys and girls is this. Get hold of a concave mirror, try out the experiment. Once you try out the experiment, you will understand it very, very much better. Alright, question number two. This is the first case. Let us go to number two. Again, we have the same few points. It's good to draw this again and again. And one word of advice, for this section, if you read it 10 times from your books, you won't get anything. From my experience with children, with students, you, you read this 20 times, you won't get anything. But you need to draw it again and again, and you will understand. It's very simple. Alright, my second case is this. I am putting the object now very far away. Just now, I put it between C and F. Now, I put it much further away. And let's take a look at the result. This is ray number one. After that, the second ray is from the top of the object cutting through F. And after which, it is reflected. Sorry. After which, it is reflected parallel to the principal axis. Look at the point of intersection. So that is the image. Now if I were to ask you, what are the characteristics of the image? Very simple. It is on the same side of the mirror as the object. So what would it be? I'm sure you can tell me that it is a real image. What else? Inverted. And it is smaller than the object. Again, if you are asked in the examination to give one characteristic, don't state two or three. Very dangerous. Because if you state one correct and one wrong, you lose your marks. Just answer the question, give only one characteristic. So, we are very clear on this. Alright, let's take a look at it again. This is number two. Now, this is the same, the same question that I gave you just now. Okay, very quickly, let's look through it again. No harm done looking at the drawing. It's very fast. Alright, image. Aha, uh -huh. I give you another photograph here. Now look at the photograph. Where is the object? Further away, on the left. Where is the mirror? It's here, the concave mirror is here. Now look at where the image is formed. It is somewhere between the object and the mirror. Somewhere between the object and the mirror. And look at it. It is inverted and it is smaller than the object. Again, get hold of a concave mirror. Go back home or go back to your school laboratory. Try out the experiment. Do yourselves a favour and you will understand it very, very much better. Number three.
And in the third case, I am going to put the object at a different place again. Wow, it's very close to the mirror. Okay, some of you must be saying, oh yeah, that is the hotel room mirror in the washroom, the concave mirror. And then your face, the image looks like a giant. Alright, you can see all the pimples there. Actually, I don't like that mirror. As you can see all my pimples. Okay, alright, coming back to this. I have my object here. Put it near the mirror. Again, first stroke. That is the first ray. Now, there is something that is very or slightly different that is very interesting now. For the second ray that I am going to draw now, I am going to cut through C. Observe very carefully what happens here. Look at the arrows. I have an arrow going to the mirror and an arrow going away from the mirror. I'm going to explain this very important concept in a while. Now over here, there are no points of intersection. So what I do is, I extrapolate the two lines. It's very clear. So is there an intersection here? Yes. Take note that I use dotted lines. Dotted lines meaning that anything that is in dotted lines means that it is a virtual image. The virtual image, you need to know how to define it. It means that the image cannot be caught on the screen. In number one and number two just now, the images were caught on the screen. That, those are real images. In number three here, this is a virtual image. One more characteristic. Upright, it's not inverted. And one more, it is enlarged. It is much bigger than the object. Alright. Allow me to explain something before we finish the lesson. Okay, just a, a quick revision here. You can see the images. That is number one. That's what we did just now. All right. Number two. And this is number three. But I said I wanted to explain something about this. All right. Sorry. So what I'll do now is I'll just go to one of the blank pages and I'll explain to you. All right. Oh, this is interesting, isn't it? It's a plate or saucer rather. Now, I'm going to construct, I'm going to draw a circle first. I'm going to draw a circle. Okay, all of you follow me, you draw a circle too. Okay, very good. Alright, I'm just going to explain to you what I'm going to do now. Alright, I'm going to draw the midpoint or the center point of the circle. Okay. This is the center point of the circle. Now, as I explain, you will begin to appreciate the concepts in the concave mirror. So, this point is actually the center of curvature of a mirror. Center of curvature of the curved mirror. Let's say that this is going to be a concave mirror. All right? It is a concave mirror. I'm going to draw it. This is the concave mirror. I can even shade it like that. Concave mirror. Now I'm going to explain a little bit of mathematics so that you will understand why the ray going through C will be reflected along its path. All right? Now let us say that I have a ray from C All right There is a ray of light from C going to the mirror And just now I mentioned that there is an arrow going to the mirror as well as an arrow reflecting back along the same path I'm sure you will ask me Uncle, why is it so? Alright, please look at this part. Just look at this point. I'm going to draw a line here. 
and straight away you will know that what I'm drawing is the tangent. Alright? This is the tangent to the circle. This is C. Let me call this point X. Alright? I can call this point T. So Tx is actually the tangent to the circumference of the circle. And you would know that this is a right angle because Cx is the radius. And because Cx is the radius and this is 90 degrees, any ray of light going to the mirror will be reflected along its path. Now this is very important for you to understand because after you have understood this, whenever you draw a diagram like this, any ray drawing in any curved mirrors, you will know that any point or any ray going through C, reaching the mirror, it will be reflected along its path. And it is only through the center of curvature. Okay, to sum it up, you have learned how to construct drawing the uh, diagrams according to scale. You have also understood the point about the center of curvature and also the ray of light going through C. You have understood how to write down characteristics answering the questions. So go back and practice. Go back, carry out the experiment with the concave mirror and you will do very well. So with that, I would like to say thank you very much again for being with me and may God bless you.